right, folks, here we are back in the scene. As you can see, I've added a bunch of stuff. So I've made most of this planet, planet spin. Uh, I will address Jupiter in a minute. And then I've also added the scenes to um, for the Witchill planets. Just have a look now in the viewer mode. Uh, what I want to do is grab Saturn and now we move into the, its individual scene and as you can see it's quite large but then again we do want to uh, communicate the relative scale to an extent and as you can see also what I've added is that I've made all the planets spin around their axis in a very slow pace in this one so just adding the spin functionality through objects um, options and other than that it's the same thing going around in here uh, so we can interact with the planet and so on and so forth and the data and then go back to the scene now what i'm gonna do is i'm going to just remind you guys about one thing so i'm gonna show how i've done the spinning part in this scene so uh, so let me just grab earth here and if i go to object options and under spin you can see that it's rotating on the y-axis direction counterclockwise i.e left with 0.1 rotations per second and the reason i've used uh earth as a reference point is that i've so i've used this chart that i found just by googling where uh you get this chart where orbital velocity relative to that of earth so so earth is here one and the others velocities are stated in relation to that so i've taken this uh, put in the spinning speeds rotations per second in relation to that using oh, i'm just trying to get a hold of let's have a look at for instance mercury so if we now go to its object options and spin you can see that it's 0.16 so uh, and it's according to that table so it's actually it's rounded up a bit but anyhow it's faster than um than Earth. Then, if we look around and let's try to find the other planets, where are they? Okay, so let's take Neptune and spin. And yeah, it's it's again according to the table, it's considerably fast, uh, slower than the Earth. And so now let's add this to jupiter so we'll do object options spin on the y-axis and as you can see the default option is very fast so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go here into the chart again and see that jupiter is 0.43 in relation to Earth, and to then put here is 0 0.043, and that should give us the accurate speed. And as you can see, it slowed down considerably. So yeah, that's the uh, adding spinning to each. Um, one more thing. So if we go to the viewer. And what I want to do now, I want to catch this guy over here. And as you can see, nothing happens. And that is because um, I haven't created the individual scene for that one. So just to, as a reminder, we want, I'll do that now. 
So, uh, at scene, it's Neptune. And then we do the same stuff that we've done with the other planets. Uh, we find the Neptune solo asset. We bring, and I might as well bring these time. So also details. The assets are now transferring behind this messy scene over here. Uh, scale, let's put it to 0.3. Go. Then we'll position it to the usual zero one zero. It's quite big. Um, and what we want to do is allow the use controls. There we go. And then what I've done in this scene uh, is the sp spin, but I put it to the smallest value here which is 0 0.05 so you can see that it spins but it's not very fast i think that makes sense and then we'll address these guys over here we'll bring them closer like so a little bit closer still we make them face the camera on the y-axis and then let's move we'll make this guy face the camera as well before moving it behind and then making it invisible and then we're gonna add the interaction to this one and for that we need to get a hold of this guy that is now invisible over here and then move to a position oh yeah what i want to do first actually is to toggle its visibility so that we see the animation coming in and now i want to change its position next to the other one okay that's good enough and then we also want that to face the camera. Oh yeah, we have done that already. And finally, we want to add an interaction to it to enable us to get back to the main scene. So action response, scene change, main scene. All right, let's test this out. Um, oh. Yes, Neptune can do all kinds of stuff with it. Uh, the information comes in and looks fairly okay. And then, yes, we get back to the main scene. <clears throat> all right, folks, one more thing. So in my user testing, which was limited, but there was some, we found that actually now that there are planets are spinning with quite speed, especially the smaller ones, it's quite hard to access them, uh, you know, the individual scenes. So therefore what I added was uh, a purpose for the sun. So when you go enter the proximity of the sun, the whole thing uh, stops. So the planets are here. And then 
so that makes easier it more easier to access and the other thing that I added was a, a, a little bit of visual feedback for the user when they make a selection so what you see here is uh, hand in hand with the scene transition you uh, get a little bit of a animation which sort of uh, notches the planet up a bit and I use the same uh, move to uh, regarding position as we did with the information panels and you always get uh, back to the main scene where the planets are spinning through the individual planets so we don't need to necessarily toggle that spinning but what I'll do now is just to give another example uh, so the same thing happens when you select Mercury for instance there's that uh, small animation uh, and just to show you quickly uh, just how that was done so now you see this uh, blue perimeter around the Sun and when we go to Sun and interaction you see there's an enter proximity interaction and what you what I then did was I selected all the other planets here such as Mercury and I put their spin to none so that basically nullifies uh, their existing spinning velocity and also what you can do here is through this and adjust the, the proximity perimeter uh, so yeah uh, depending on how close or far to the Sun you want to make it so yeah that's one additional thing and obviously now that you've seen quite a few of the functionalities that Torch provides you got experimenting with your own pace and, and combine these functionalities and add whatever and hopefully even start your own AR prototyping project going forward so that's pretty much it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial and sign up uh, for the, my newsletter to get uh, similar stuff into your inbox going forward. So until next time, um, this is Aki signing out. Bye bye.